We have three items on individual consideration today. The first is to consider approving a letter to the BLM regarding Mesa County's comments on the conservation and landscape health proposed rule. And we have Amber Swayze, our senior managing analyst to uh, present. Good morning, Amber. Good morning, commissioners. Again, Amber Swayze with Community Development. For your consideration today, we have a letter to Tracy Stone Manning, the director of the BLM regarding Mesa County's comments on the proposed conservation and landscape health rule. It's also known as the public lands rule. According to the BLM, this rule will put conservation on equal footing with other uses by applying land health standards to all BLM managed public lands and uses. Clarify that conservation is a use within FLIPMA's multi-use framework and revise existing regulations to better meet FLIPMA's requirements that the BLM prioritize designating and protecting areas of environmental concern. The rule also creates a conservation lease program for restoration and mitigation projects. Staff has concerns that this rule is intentionally ambiguous. Um, we understand that that allows flexibility for local land managers to make changes as needed, but it also lends to assumptions on other ways that this rule could be applied on our federal lands. Uh, the BLM has put the rule forward as a categorical exclusion, but we think it would have been better served as an environmental impact statement that would allow for a more, more robust public stakeholder process where um, federal land users and local governments could engage with the BLM and hammer out some of the details in the rule. Uh, the rule was originally scheduled the comment period to end today, the 20th, but it has been extended until July 5th. If there's any changes or corrections you want to make to the letter. Okay, thank you. Do either of you have comments or questions? Go ahead. I don't have any comments or questions right now. Right now? Okay. Does anyone in the audience have any comments on this letter? Come on up to the lectern, state your name into the record. You will have three minutes to speak. Um, when you see the green light flashing, it means you have two minutes left. When you see the yellow light, you have one minute, and the red light means your time is up. Good morning. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Scott Braden. I'm the director of the Colorado Wildlands Project. Uh, good morning, members of the commission. Thanks for the opportunity to comment this morning and express my support for the BLM's proposed conservation uh, landscape health rule. Mesa County is 72% public lands, and th this has been and will continue to be a major influence on life in our county. For the first century of its existence, the major impact of these lands was related to the economic activity of ranching and what could be extracted from these public lands. Um, successive booms and busts of coal mining, uranium mining and processing, and more recently, oil and gas. Our public lands support our economic activity more than even ever before, but they're also increasingly recognized as key to supporting our quality of life, our health, and our sense of place. Businesses and individuals choose to move and start a family or a business here because of our public lands and the easy access to recreation, the scenery and cleaner environment. I'm here today to speak in favor of the proposed rule. The rule clarifies the ability of the BLM to consider conservation values when developing land use plan, plans. It allows the BLM to manage for resilient ecosystems, especially at a time of multi-year droughts and increased wildfire dangers. And finally, the public lands rule promotes the BLM's mission of multiple use and allows collaboration among users, including timber, grazing, extraction, mining, recreation, to mitigate and restore our public lands. The proposed rule clarifies that conservation is a use on equal footing with other types of land use practices. By protecting intact landscapes and functioning ecosystems, the BLM will continue to be able to deliver its legal mandate of a multiple use and sustained yield. It creates more certainty and not less around by applying public health or land health standards to all uses. It will provide conservation leasing opportunities. It will expand BLM's ability to conduct restoration projects on damaged lands, giving them back to health and productive uses. These are much needed tools we should all support because they assure that multiple uses will continue. The lands will be healthy enough to continue to provide for the multiple uses that we ask for them. 
I would just add that um, the 90 day comment period that it's now been extended to is on par with what would be offered in the EIS or you know, larger NEPA process. So there's been a lot of opportunities for public comment. I would really thank the commission for their interest in this and um, in particular, Amber and Commissioner Davis for your outreach um, and really listening to local voices as you craft the county's comment. So thanks. Thank you, Mr. Braden. Anyone else have any comments on this item? Ricky Howie, Coffee and Civic Action. This is one whopper of a letter. It is long and involved. But at the conclusion, there are two sentences that I'd like to um, mention. The speed with which this rulemaking by the BLM is being fast-tracked is highly concerning. Changing this magnitude deserves an opportunity for comprehensive dialogue. I'm just suggesting that this might be a guide for your interaction with the health department. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Howie. Anyone else have any comments on this item? Good morning. I appreciate the time to discuss with you the proposed BLM conservation leasing rule. And could you just put your name on the record, please? Yep, I am Dean Van Winkle. I'm fifth generation to care for the land, the livestock in our community here in Western Colorado, while producing a high quality protein for people in our area and across the country. Our family has several concerns with this proposed rule. One is the lack of stakeholder input when work was being done on the rule. The short time period for comments is challenging for livestock producers. This time period fell within the time frame of when most cattle ranches, along with ourselves, were moving to the high country and found it difficult to engage. I do know, I realize that the comment period has been extended for another 15 days. Our biggest concern is this rule does not put the new use on par with other uses, but gives conservation leases the power to eliminate multiple use on federal lands. <laughs> While no other use has the ability to remove another use from the landscape, conservation leases, would, and this is a direct quote, would not override valid existing rights or preclude other subsequent authorizations so long as those subsequent authorizations are compatible with the conservation use. This statement makes it clear to me that existing rights will be held hostage to conservation leases, a clear violation of the multiple use mandates mandated by Congress. For example, Van Winkle Ranch has a grazing lease in Mesa County. Let's say we're in year four of a 10 year lease. Western Watersheds, an extreme environmental group that has repeatedly attempted to remove grazing from the Western landscape is given a conservation lease on the same area. At the end of our 10 year lease, six years in my example, Western Watershed says that grazing is not compatible with their conservation lease. Under the new rule, our grazing lease could be eliminated. Not only would this directly impact our family business, but it would eventually impact the entire county. According to CSU Extension, every cow in Mesa County contributes six to $800 to our local economy. If ranches continue to be pushed out of business and out of this state and county, this will impact Main Street and Grand Junction as well. Our family would ask you as commissioners to oppose this new rule and support federal legislation to oppose the rule as well. I appreciate the time to talk to you guys about this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Van Winkle. Anyone else in the audience have any comments on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for discussion. I could. Yeah. Um, this letter says it all. I mean, it's very well done. Um, thank you um, to, to staff and Amber for putting all this together. You put a lot of time into this and I appreciate that. Um, I, um, Scott, thanks for coming today. I uh, appreciate the involvement on this one. Um, we've had a lot of dialogue on this one. I think at the end of the day, we just see things a little differently, but I do appreciate your involvement in this one. Um, there's a lot of concerns with this, but I think the biggest one, and I'll just focus on the one, and, and Dean, you mentioned it. I think it's just the primacy with which conservation leases will exist under this new rule. 
And Dean, I think you hit it on the head, as long as those authorizations align with conservation objectives. And that sets um, conservation leases above every single uh, other single um, use. And I, I think that's problematic. Um, I think there's an area for conservation. I think there's tools in our in our bag already for conservation. I think this goes a little too far and outside the both the authority of the BLM and outside of its mission as well. So that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Daniel. Yeah, <clears throat> there is a lot of questions around this rule and the ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity it does not help, um, and I do think that the language. Um, needs time and we need extensive stakeholder discussion to get this right. In Mesa County, we've actively listened to the concerns from our residents and that was conservationists, ranchers, outdoorsmen, sportsmen, the ag and ener energy in industry. And we do want to make sure that we're listening and passing on our residents' concerns to our federal partners. And we're really grateful that there is an extended comment period. Um, we want to make sure that um, we're really listening because Mesa County is 74% public lands. We want to make sure our public lands are taken care of. And I also do have a concern. Um, why is this conservation lease? Why aren't we having conservation broadly? Um, why does it need to be in a lease? Why is it either or? And, and so I want to make sure that we're being really thoughtful through this process. We're engaging all of the stakeholders. Um, we don't want this to be rushed. Um, I do think best public policy happens when we take in all of the voices and all of the concerns through this, because um, this really does impact Mesa County in, in a very great way that I don't think it would impact other counties as such being 74% public land. So um, thank you, Amber, and our staff for really um, listening to our community and just passing along our concerns in this rulemaking process. Thank you. And um, you guys have really said it all. I agree. Uh, great job, Amber. Very thoughtful, well-written letter. Um, and I agree with Commissioner Davis that the, the primacy that the conservation leases will have is the biggest concern. Uh, for the Van Winkle family, who's been um, ranching for five generations, as you mentioned, to have your lease just immediately canceled by this um, is just not right. So um, I also support the letter and oppose the rule. And if there's nothing further, I will entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Uh, second. Um, and I should have said to, uh, to, to approve item number one is entered into the record. Okay. So uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries uh, three to zero.